if you have a strong profile if you have a strong professional uh, profile in place then google is going to contact you. if i have any requirements in my team then the recruiter assigned for this hiring will first of all go to places like linkedin you may or may not know the answer up front that does not mean you are not a good engineer but what google does or for that matter any fan company will do is they'll only stick to the basics if you don't know what is a binary search tree you don't know the basics of a programming language or if you don't know the basics of sql you don't know how to design a system or how a system really gets a design then there is no point so nobody will ask you anything for example related to microsoft as you are maybe if you are joining the microsoft cloud team they'll simply check your ability to program hey folks welcome to trendy tech this is mansa nagraj i'm back again with an exceptional journey that would leave even some of the finest software engineers apprehensive well from being an electrical engineering graduate to working in one of the dream companies of all time google <laughs> Our guest for today is Sudha Sathwa who had the opportunity to work with some of the well reputed companies like Infosys, Tech Mahindra, Voice and now working as a strategic cloud data engineer at Google. Well without wasting much time let's jump right into the podcast and know about his journey and learn from his experiences. Hi Sudha a very warm welcome. Thank you so much for uh, joining in and uh, I'm more than pleased to have you here today. Also I really believe that this podcast would be impacting a lot of our audience. Um well I say this uh, for a sheer reason that you hold a humongous amount of experience across varied domains uh, especially related to data. Well without further ado I would request you to give a brief introduction about uh, yourself. Yes my name is Sudha Sathwa I have close to uh, 15 plus years of experience in IT. Uh to sum it up I have uh, only and majorly worked on the data side of things. So I started as a DBA then I moved into data warehousing I moved into data analytics. I did some form of data science uh, especially related to machine learning in my in my last stint. I have also looked into big data applications as as I have went along. Yeah. So in the brief that's that's the experience which I have. Right. Okay, that's interesting. Um, um and uh, okay, the very first thing uh, the very first question that kind of um, came through my mind while I was going through your LinkedIn profile was um, uh, what was your thought process uh, behind wanting to upskill yourself with big data technologies? Uh, in spite of holding a PG diploma in from well reputed institutes like IIIT Bangalore and more so uh, in equally important and uh, booming areas like data science AI and ML what was your drive towards learning big data if i could ask so uh, so my uh, intention was to keep myself updated with the data engineering that i have done a few years back and the landscape of that has changed over the years the needs have changed the data volume may have increased as well and the way we use these technologies now as opposed to what uh, i used to do 5 years back has also rapidly changed uh, because of advent of a lot of things like cloud and devops and so on so it is quite essential that from time to time even if we have uh, studied something we should be in a position we should be open minded enough to you know reread that and uh, re upskill ourselves as well so that is the primary reason why Uh, uh i was looking for the you know upskilling again myself into big data uh, areas totally agree on that um learning is very much required in every phase of your life so uh, upskilling is also equally important especially for it folks i feel uh, so such a valid reason i would say um well um i would uh, really want to understand um this from you um especially i wanted to know it from you since you've been exposed to data um you know like the data world right from its budding stage i would say uh, maybe from 2013 14 onwards so what as per you is the future of big data because you've been you know like knowing the different technology evolution part of it and what do you think uh, does big data hold i mean like as opportunities for uh, the enthusiasts in this field so uh, as of now uh, i cannot really think about any business who would not like to make the best use of the data that they have and if that is the intention then the speed and the volume at which the data will grow is going to be immense there may be cases where i don't have so much of data in a given organization or a setup right now but that scenario will change and that is the reason why uh, irrespective of what sort or what kind of analytics we want to do or what kind of insights we want to draw how we want to apply that in the real field is all good they are all the cherries on the top but the background is always created by the data engineering principles and that is where uh, big data still plays a very important role i don't foresee by my experience that this is going to end any time soon in the next 2 to 3 decades because it is impossible for an organization to have a data driven mindset and not utilize the data that they already have 
uh, in which case big data is going to play a very very important role uh, true that i mean i totally agree on that as well so um, since data is growing definitely big data is the way to um, get insights from such huge volumes of data yeah, yeah. And um, well, I, I really can't miss out on this question uh, by any means, um, as it would even disappoint a lot of our audience if I didn't pick up this question. Well, um, if you could give a high level brief on the interview process in um, Google, or for instance, the number of rounds that they had and um, the major area of focus in each of the rounds, if you could throw some light there, it will be really helpful. The first thing that uh, uh, we need to remember is that uh, if you have a strong profile, if you have a strong professional uh, profile in place, then Google is going to contact you. So there is no need for you to contact or to apply for jobs into Google. Uh, why I say that is because if you have kept your LinkedIn profile updated, for example, then that helps and that will help a lot. That will help because that is from where the recruiters will come. And that is how uh, my recruiter came to me as well. So uh, that's the first point that we need to always take care of. So while we are working or applying for Mang or Fang companies, we need to keep our online presence uh, evaluated from time to time uh, because that is usually the entry door. I'm not saying that you can't apply onto Google's career space. There is a process. Uh, there is a background uh, check that happens after which your CV gets shortlisted and so on. But more often than not, uh, if I have any requirements in my team, then the recruiter assigned for this uh, hiring will first of all go to places like uh, LinkedIn right? rather than uh, looking at the applications. And then we will look at the applications. So that's the first stage. Now, uh, imagine my CV gets shortlisted as of date. Uh, I get a call from the recruiting head. Uh, the recruiting head may have multiple people working under him or her. Uh, the recruiting head will give me a call and have a very casual kind of a conversation about the fact that my CV was shortlisted. Uh, uh, and then what will be the further rounds? Now, the answer to this question is going to change depending on what role you are applying for. So if it is a managerial role, it will be different. If it is an architecture role, it will be different. If it is a data role, it will be different. But overall, uh, on an average, you can expect at least uh, three to four rounds, at least. Uh, now, then uh, how, how these are done is as simple as this. The, uh, uh, the recruiter will come to you uh, with a date and a time for a very introductory kind of a call where the role will be explained, your doubts will be cleared, more of a discussion. And by the end of the discussion, a couple of relevant questions related to the field will get asked. For example, if you are uh, getting hired for a data role, they might show you a data structure on an algorithm on their screen on the slide and you have to tell the outcome of that code or what algorithm it is or what is the time or space complexity of that of that work right that gives a very nice idea for the recruiter that okay i have shortlisted the right candidate who at least knows the basics and then we can go ahead so that's the first round it's it's more of a you know a, a confirmation kind of a discussion uh post that round you will be receiving an email with details of what further rounds are there basis the role for which you uh, will be selected uh, or or the role for which you are getting hired uh then there will be the first round of the interview, which is usually entirely technical. So for a data engineer, for example, it will have questions from Python. If Python is going to be your preferred choice of the language, you can choose any language in which you want to answer. So it is not really a mandate that you have to be an expert into Python. You can answer in any language you know. And we have people in Google who will come to that interview, even if the language is rare. Right? Then they'll ask you questions, obviously, on SQL. So Python and SQL really becomes a very good uh, combo. Uh, then there will be questions related to big data and questions related to design. How will you design systems and so on? Uh, and this will be kind of a 45 to 50 minutes kind of a thing uh, where at least three to four questions will be there. Uh, some of these questions will be coding questions without any ID. So please don't expect you will be asked to share your screen and some Eclipse ID will be there and you will code it using all those autocomplete options and so on. No, you won't be getting that. You will be getting a Google Doc and you have to code it there. Uh, the code should be production ready. That is the expectation because that is the quality of code we write at Google. Uh, post that round, uh, whatever are the leftovers will uh, cater at least one more coding round and one more system design round. Uh, the point I would like to specifically mention here is before uh, going to details is you can choose the date and time when you want to take the interview. So even if you want to get interviewed after three weeks because you want to prepare something, the recruiter himself or herself will tell you the places from where you can upskill and the places from where you can, you know, revise the concepts, how you can do the practice and so on. 
and then you can take your own time let's say two weeks and then you can have the interview scheduled on the given day and time uh, at times if the interviewer is from the us and if you are from india then there can be a difference in time uh, so the first round was an intro round second round was a coding round third round will also be a coding round for example for me it was a round where i was asked to design a machine learning algorithm sort of from scratch it was a problem statement that relates to a machine learning problem and then in the system design round uh, there will be questions related to how will you design a big data system or a data warehousing system uh, what will be the components you will again have that word doc where you have to you know write and draw and explain things to people and so on. Uh, once these technical rounds are done and then as i said let's keep this in mind uh, this can be dependent on your role once that is done you will have the final hiring manager round where the hiring manager will see whether you are googly enough to be hired or not uh, th- there's a separate kind of a definition for this but let me make it simple if you are a solution provider who has easy language and you have that zeal to help people then you are a good so that will be checked in such kind of a hiring round i'm sure there will be some kind of hiring manager rounds for each and every man companies and they'll have their own ways to judge you so that's kind of it so overall four to five rounds uh, there can be retries in the rounds also the recruiter likes you but the interview score was not so good he or she may put you through even more rounds uh, excellent uh, that was really extensive explanation and um, turned out to be very informative and um, i really like the way you've put across that um, you know you don't have to hustle yourself to apply for the companies but rather if you work on building your profile that really gets the recruiters to you so that's a real good takeaway from here and also a very good informative um, process explanation of google interview thank you so much there and uh, well as a follow up question on this um, how should one plan and prepare themselves for interviews in companies like google or man companies uh, just uh, i mean how was your strategy to prepare for it uh, i will simply tell you the strategy that my recruiter told me to follow and i really appreciate that strategy because i believe that is the right way to learn things i don't appreciate when you know you come to an interview and you are asked specific questions related to specific technologies you may or may not know the answer up front that does not mean you are not a good engineer but what google does or for that matter any fan company will do is they'll only stick to the basics if you don't know what is a binary search tree or you don't know what is the time or space complexity of an algorithm you don't know the basics of a programming language or if you don't know the basics of sql you don't know how to design a system or how a system really gets designed then there is no point you may be an expert into some cloud technology but that does not make you an engineer an engineer is a person who solves problems so my uh, suggestion is focus only on the basics only on the basics things that we were taught in schools or into colleges that is the only subject that will be asked on so nobody will ask you anything for example related to microsoft as you are maybe if you are joining the microsoft cloud team they simply check your ability to program or to design a software that's a nice um take away there like as in uh, you just have to be strong on your basics which uh, definitely will help you in exploring the advanced topics shouldn't be a problem right. unless not until you're not good at your basics you really can't jump into the advanced topics that's the point exactly yes right right um <clears throat> that's nice excellent um well my next question uh, would be um what as per you are the important big data technologies one should um have expertise in in order to crack interviews and also sustain in the industry uh, working on really challenging projects uh something that you know sumit sir mentions from time to time during our course as well uh map reduce is not a forgotten uh, tool uh we may put some focus on things like spark we need to understand how a distributed computing system works we need to understand sql and how databases work these days we have uh, sql as well as no sql so some knowledge of no sql will be really useful but uh, the reason why i mentioned map reduce is because map reduce is still used and it is used in the industry and its varieties are used to create newer products so having the basics in place about how a distributed system really works how a map reduce uh, program is designed what are the design principles that it follows uh and so on now uh, and then there will be you know frameworks like spark there will be no sql databases like uh, mongo db uh some exposure on to cloud will be good some exposure to devops will be good but it is too much for one person 
uh, in which case i would strongly recommend to focus only on the basic the core concepts are important you yeah. can definitely learn uh, the add ons which is definitely yeah. required to true. build up yeah true well um, i would also like to know the resources that uh, you preferred and that uh, was helpful for you while you were preparing for your uh, for the big data tech stack for big data i have not used anything other than our course at ntt so i have not used any other books or any other courses from elsewhere uh other than a few online courses which i had taken earlier uh but i think uh, after i uh, did a revision of all the concepts from the trendy tech program which we have there was no necessity of going to any place else the next question would be uh, what is the role or importance of uh, data structures in clearing the interviews and uh, how should one prepare for um, data structures dsa now this is an interesting question but let me put it in a different way uh usually what we think is we should know how to you know hold the utensils or heat the utensils that we need to cook but that is not the reason why you have the utensils you have the utensils because somebody needs to cook and you have to eat that if you don't eat you won't live so the point is similar to the data structures and algorithms part as well the data structures and algorithms are those tools which you use to cook it is not the dish but it will help you to create the dish if you know how a dish is created then it will be a great dish and then it will be healthier for you too so the point here that i want to make is to know an algorithm is one thing but to know where that algorithm can be effectively used is what we should uh, really focus on because that will give us the long term edge or otherwise just to learn data structures and algorithms we can just go and do a google search there are free websites we will get all the information we need but if we don't know where that specific algorithm will be helpful for me to solve a problem then there is no point Yeah right. That was a really interesting analogy that you gave in um, on the data structures, um, just relating it to um, the utensils as well. So yeah, that's um, that's nice, and uh, pretty much like uh, you gave the importance of data structures, how important it is. And um, also, since you have been a data geek, I would say, how important do you think is um, SQL for a data engineer? Uh, well, not only for a data engineer, I would say, but uh, I haven't, uh, as of now, seen any roles, inclusive of the architecture roles, where people don't know what SQL is, and how to use it or the capabilities. Uh, what I mean by that is, if you are not aware of the language that a person speaks, you cannot really communicate. and sql is the language that is spoken by the databases that's the only way you can really communicate with the data stores that you have and that's hence the only way you can find insights or uh, uh, do any analytics on top of it so even if it is an application related only to data engineering or it is data analysis or it is in the machine learning side of thing you will always need sql so a very strong and in depth knowledge of sql is required it's important that you learn the language uh, to be able to communicate uh, i would say So yeah. Um, lastly, um, if you could quote a few important tips and suggestions um, to all of our audience who are preparing for the interviews um, from your end. Uh, my first tip will be if you have uh, not already done that, please create accounts on websites like LeetCode, Hacker Rank, and so on, because that's the first place where you are challenged. You are challenged to do things that you have never seen before, and that will help you increase the amount of hours you put into practice or to solve that problem. if you are finding it non interesting i would suggest my own approach the usual approach that i follow is that i take up a problem statement and i try to solve it so if i want to learn anything related to let's say aws or anything related to google cloud today i'll take a sample example or use case let's say i want to know or estimate the rent of houses in my area and i'll try to apply all of those tools that i want to learn to solve that problem which means i am just doing a project so by doing hands on exercises which are challenging like the ones available in these websites uh, and by doing projects i think we can learn a lot more rather than only sitting and uh, viewing the youtube uh, content and so on so uh, by doing hands on we will learn a lot more yeah agree there totally agree there thank you so much for all the information that you have shared with us it was really a pleasure talking to you and um, wishing you loads of success in your future endeavors Um, thank you so much, uh, Sudha, for joining in, joining us today. Well, I hope you found the podcast insightful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do subscribe and smash that bell icon for more such interesting podcasts.